What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 86 of the Roots Wrestling Podcast, day two of our world championship coverage. Matt, a whole bunch of wrestling going on. I can only imagine what it, what it would have been like live time because I watched it all when I woke up here in America because I am not a night owl and I cannot stay up all night. Um, Matt, <laughs> the, Matt, the arena seemed packed. It seemed really energetic. You know, I was really most shocked by how much they were cheering for Burroughs. They love him. I mean, they love him. I, I, and I think love him. That's what's great. I think that's what's great about the wrestling community. Like, regardless of your your countries, your allegiances, whatever, like you appreciate greatness, and yeah. that, that's what's great to see that the, the world appreciates greatness in, in every every shape and form. It doesn't matter what country you're from, and so he's beloved. Like, I mean, oh he is God. iconic over here. I mean, I couldn't believe. I thought. I thought maybe the sound was off because, again, there's no announcers. On the, on the matches I'm watching, there's no announcers. I don't track the announcers, but I'm not hearing any. And the matches I'm watching, I thought maybe the sound was off because I figured they would be booing Burroughs. Like, because, I mean, re- he's wrestling mostly old Soviet opponents, you know? And so, and then had, after what, what, it happened, four, four in a row, right? Four Dagestan, not just, right? He's had four wrestlers in a row from Dagestan. That is mind blowing, right? Yeah, blows you away. How do you I mean, that feel- would be an interesting discussion at a certain time. Like, the concentration, it's got to have by, I mean, there's not even a conversation. Far and away. Oh, yeah, it's not the close. The highest right. concentration of talent in the entire world. Not, it's not even. For right. any, for any for sport. For any sport, oh. Yeah, that would be that would be interesting. Cause I, in wrestling, it's obviously not even close. Well, I mean, when you look at some of these brackets. Because then feel, it shrinks even further in the country of Dagestan. They're pretty much all from the same city in Dagestan, yeah. too, right? Bloody Kavkaz, I believe. Yeah, Bloody Kavkaz. Yep. So, Matt, how Which do you is, feel about the international transfers? I mean, obviously it comes up. Mitchik, right, is wrestling for a medal. Do you, are you in favor? Are you not in favor? I mean, you know, we talked about Burroughs bracket. They're all Russians. They're all Russians. There's like 10 of them in one bracket. Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty much all around the world. Who's who is the guy today from France? Gadziev, right? There's a bunch he, of Gadzievs. Yeah, I mean he's he's the same thing. Chimizo, like all the Russians are dispersed, you know, throughout countries. And you know, I've I've heard some rumblings that people have a problem with like Chimizo training in America, but I'm like, hey, I mean. Wherever the best opportunity is, I mean, you're 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 trying to gain an advantage, and wherever you can go, that's fine. And you know, not to get out topic, only but one their argument is that we shouldn't be funding Chimizo's training. It's not against Chimizo; it's that people, certain people in America, are funding Chimizo's training. Which, you know, what I, I don't have an issue with. Um, I see what their I mean, their point is, but I don't have an issue with it. Yeah, because bo- bottom line, like with Chimizo, and. Uh, the New York Regional Training Center. The yeah. the focus on is on developing your program and making your program more competitive. And wherever you can get these guys, I mean, it's hard. It's hard with the RTC system as you're as you're finding out at Wisconsin yeah. to get a, the elite level talent to come and train with you. So Absolutely. if you can't get the best Americans, why wouldn't you try and get the best from well, the rest I of the world? I don't want to get back into this RTC discussion, Matt, but. <laughs> the rules specifically state training to make the United States Olympic team, which means Michigan, they're all, they're done. I mean, they're all, right, they're also for San Marino and Slovakia and Serbia. Like, they, they shouldn't be allowed to do that. I mean, that's that's literally they, what they the come. rule says. I didn't make the rules. It's not even, it, it, should, it should be the ITC, the International Training Center, right? Sure, yeah. I can get down with that. Okay, Matt, we got to get into wrestling. I'm sure you and I could debate RTC all day, but we got to get into wrestling because there was so much of it going on. You know who I want to start with? You know I'm not usually... I'm usually just full-bore American men's freestyle wrestling. Tamir Mensa. Um, now, I will tell you, I didn't watch her a huge amount before she signed with Rudis, and obviously, because she's a Rudis athlete, I've been paying more attention to her. Matt, at no point in this tournament was it even competitive. She is so much better than everyone else. She is so good. It's like, I, how many years is she going to go without someone touching her? Or is there someone in this division that maybe was hurt this year or something that I don't know about? Because, I mean, she literally, 
There was one tiny slip up in the finals where there was a little uh, threat, but other than that, it was just like bloodbath the whole time. And even even the threat in the finals tonight when she got when she got headlocked, uh-huh. if you look at it again, her foot was pointed to the outside, mm-hmm. and the girl was driving her over yeah. her foot and almost out her knee. So it's yeah. like I think she could have escaped it. Easy, she did escape it, but it was. Really, really scary for a second exactly, there because yeah. she was dominating so much. But her toe, her foot was pointed to the outside. Yeah, my knee got blown out. But holy cow. I don't know who's going to touch her. If she stays locked in like this, I mean, this was a loaded weight class. Like everybody yeah, grabbed it on the weight weight class side. It's the better one of the, of the ones around it. Yeah, I mean, every, every person was in this weight class. I mean, it was a, an Olympic qualifying weight. She destroyed, decimated, destroyed, the best man. Field, one of the I best. mean, not only yeah. like not only by the score. Every once in a while, you see one a score that's kind of wide, but there's a whole bunch of scrambles, and someone just barely comes out on top. I mean, these girls they weren't really coming close to scoring on her. It wasn't like she was sneaking through. It was just like, boom, leg attack, score, boom, leg attack, score. She scores going to single leg on this side. She scores with a high crotch going to that side. She scores with a double leg. Um, she scores with a headlock. You know, yeah. she has. A lot of really good options, and she keeps great position. She doesn't make stupid mistakes. I mean, man, I was, like I said, I, I didn't watch her a huge amount before this, but I couldn't believe how much better than everyone else she was. Yeah, and I think, you know, obviously this first time, she was a bronze medalist last year. She won it this year, and so even in the finals, you could see in that second period, she's like, I, I just want to win a world title. Right? Yeah, she could really have finished that past. girl for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I think, I, I don't discredit, I like, I get it. You, you got to secure your first world title, but I think what it bodes well for her is like, now that she's got the first one under her belt, it's kind of a scary prospect about what she could do now that she has the yeah. confidence, like, I am in the best the world. I know I can destroy these people. And it's similar to what Cox has done this yeah. year. It's like, He's got that championship under his belt, and he just jumped to another level. Yeah. And I think the same thing is going to happen. So, Tamara. so let, let, let's then let's take this. Well, first of all, did Tamara win the OW, or do you know yet? I don't. I, I don't know. Right. I didn't didn't hear that. I was hustling back over here to try and jump on this. But so let's make the jump <clears> to Jaden then. How good was Jaden? Didn't give up a point. Didn't give up one point today. In an interesting stat, Ben. Do you realize he hasn't given up a takedown in over a year? Not only has he heard that, won yeah. every match in the past year, he hasn't given up a takedown. That's pretty mind-blowing, huh? What's mind-blowing, like, we all know he's a freak of nature, but how he didn't give up that takedown in the semifinals, did you see that? Yeah, uh-huh. And pers- I mean, I mean he was just what he does, what he does though. Fit. That's what you should expect from him, right? I know, but he was defending from a push-up position. He wasn't even defending with his legs. It was all his arms yeah. defending that takedown. I mean, he, it was like, but he's just so he he moves so unique. He's so unique in what he does that it, it's almost like Yanni now. Like there is not a lot of things that Jane Cox can do that surprise me because it's like, shoot, this guy is so unique and so powerful and so proficient in what he does. It's, there's not a lot that surprises you. Yeah, and what. He just added another layer there on that defense in the semifinals with that leg attack. He wasn't defending a a leg, the traditional leg defense. Like, it was all his – he was using defensive upper body position, which I'd never really seen. Yeah. You know, usually when you're in a quad pod, all your force and all your power is still centered around your core and your your legs. Yeah. He he had that taken away. The guy had secured his legs. He was defending with his arms and and beat the shot – with his arms. Most of the time we say, you can't beat a guy's legs, right? Yeah, but absolutely. But the guy beat his legs and he beat it with his arms. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so impressive. Um, do you really think the guy in the final stands a chance against him tomorrow? Because I don't, I don't really feel like he stands a chance. No. You're going to blow him away, no. right? Definitely not. Definitely not yeah. giving up a takedown. It's, it's all a matter of like, I, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but like going back to Tamara, like how bad does he – how how bad does he want to win a title or how bad does he actually want to make a statement like I'm the best guy in the world, period? Like the best. The best. We're talking about any weight class. The like the best. Any weight class. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think that's where he's done. We, we talked about him jumping levels after yeah. securing his first world title. I think now it's not a, as much about do I want to be the best in my weight class? I want to be the best in the world. That's what he looks like when he's wrestling now. I mean, and <laughs> if he doesn't give up eight points tomorrow, you probably got a hard time, hard time making an argument against uh, him being the best <clears throat> in the world because that's what a year plus. <clears throat> Well, uh, it's going to be about a year and a half without giving up a takedown by the time he wrestles again? I think the only thing that the, the people that want to have this debate could say is that he's in a non-Olympic weight class, and it wasn't a huge field. It wasn't a deep field, but there's still talented guys in there. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so let's go uh, – let's see. Let's go Bur- I guess Burroughs next. Um he had a, a wild day. We kind of discussed this yesterday with the level of difficulty he was going to have from, from match one. And it started in match one. Matt, that match, that was the first match I watched when I woke up. That match was freaking bonkers. Bonkers. I mean, it was, it was crazy. Uh, that guy, I know that guy's dirty. And that was the one where the guy kept, I couldn't believe it when I just kept hearing the crowd was booing that guy over and over and over again. Crazy. I mean, you, you got to love it. Like, that's – that. I mean, you you experienced this – you've experienced the transformation in the public – the public – Yeah. The, 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 the general public embracing you yeah. in the past year since you jumped in on the UFC. But it's, it's neat to see a, a guy like Burroughs that truly transcends the sport, right? When Absolutely. you transcend the sport – you're ver- universally beloved, and they just—it doesn't matter what your country is like. You you're give freaking up your Kazakhstan, and they love Jordan Burroughs. Yeah, it's awesome. Wild, I love it. Wild, wow. And that shows you just—I mean, the one thing that really resonate has resonated with me in the last five days is how passionate these people are about wrestling. And yeah. you know, I think we love—I mean, we obviously love wrestling, but. There's so much national pride here. And yep. it was – I started cheering for the Kazakh wrestlers because – They're having you, a good tournament, hear, Matt. The Kazakhstan's having a great tournament. Awesome. And I think it's because, like, you could feel the passion in the arena. You could feel the love for all the wrestlers and, you know, the pride they have. And you just got kind of you come back with a Kazakhstan there. shirt on for the next show when you get home, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> Well, I still haven't mastered the language, so I can't even say hello in Dagestani, oh, so I haven't done gosh. that great of a job of embracing the culture. Okay, well, let me see, Matt. So they got they got or Kazakh. Sorry. They got a bronze medal at fifty seven, they got a silver medal at sixty five, they're in the finals at seventy seventy. They had a good run in the into the quarters um at seventy four, so they'll be in the wrestlebacks there. Um I mean they lost to Jaden, so they're in the wrestlebacks there. I mean, they're having a good tournament. I mean, at the majority of the weights, even us? when they didn't win a medal, they, they've qualified the weight. Yeah. They've qualified a ton of weights. Matt, they're so. beating us right now. In freestyle wrestling, Russia is number one, uh, and Kazakhstan is number two, then Iran, then Turkey, then the U.S. Wow. That is not good. Yeah, we gotta get, we got to have a great day tomorrow. How many, just, the, how many of the Kazakh wrestlers are actually, uh, I, wait, you said Kazakh, or are they are they Dagestan transfers? I think, now don't, don't quote me, but I believe in the, some of the information that I heard, I believe all of them are from Kazakhstan. I mean, there, there is a unique look, right? The Kazakhstan is, is actually right next to China for not to give a geography lesson or anything. Um, so you can see they look a lot more Asian. Than most of the Russians, there are a lot, a lot they, more European. They have a lot of Mongolian features, right? Which yeah, Mongolia is, is yeah. similar, like it's near near China. Yeah, so and, Kazakhstan yeah, touches I mean, Mongolia and China right here. They're they're right there. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, if you look at, if you look at their lineup and look at the majority of the wrestlers, they have a very keen resemblance to Mongolia. More, they they look more Asian than your traditional Russian athletes or former Soviet state athletes. Yep, absolutely. Okay, hey, we got to keep going, Burroughs. Okay, this first match, Matt Burroughs, um, he gets down early, gives up the chest wrap, he chips away, come back, he's winning seven six, and then he gives up uh, 
A takedown to a gut. And this takedown, I might have to do a technique on it. Well, I, I don't know how to do it. I'm just watching other people do it. But it's becoming popular. So there's the uh, – it's the your Iranians really do it, but Americans do it really well now too. It's like the underhook and you're kind of on one knee and you're pushing them out of bounds. And this hand is posted yep. on the mat. And now they're doing like a slide by, wham, like there from there. Burroughs got hit with it twice. I've seen it from the full upright position, but I have not seen it used in that position. And they're using it for the other. So Burroughs got hit with it twice uh, this match and then and then the following match. Um, so the guy, he gives up that takedown. Then the gut wrench is down 10-7 with less than a minute left. Were you nervous in the stands? Yeah, I had to take a potty break mid-match. No! <laughs> during the second break. <laughs> uh, oh, man. That, 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 I mean, but it just... It's Premier Burroughs, comes back, gets the takedown, and then gets a push out to tie it to 10 to 10, but he's still losing because the guy's got the four point move, even though it's 10 yep. 10. And then that last sequence, they call two for Burroughs, the other team protests. I thought it should have been two. He literally elevates, the dum dum held on, went right to his back. Burroughs yep. lifted the leg enough to make him go to his back. I thought it's two. So they come back and say the guy went out of bounds for a switch. I actually didn't think. He went out of bounds, and they give Burroughs one, and he wins the match. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Like, what you were seeing, I saw the same thing. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think going into the second period, I, I think from an American's perspective, we've seen Jordan do this so many times, get in a hole, get behind, even, you know, no matter what the, the scenario is, that he's going to come back. So as much as I was nervous, I like – you know he's a second period wrestler, you know. But most of the time, he's not out of striking distance. He was a little further out of striking distance than he normally is in matches yeah. like this. From, well, from and then, spotting I mean, the guy so many times. His next one, he's down four zero with the break mat. Yeah, crazy. I mean, just like and, and we and we we talked about it. I really think with this new weigh in system, day of weigh ins, I really think. Yeah. It affects him. I, and we, it, we saw it, in the Ogbar you know, match, the first one, he was it looked a little sluggish, and it, it appeared as though he picked it up as he went on. But, you know, obviously with having to make weight the second day also. So, number one, the first weight is close to when you compete. But then you also have to keep your weight fairly low, you know, relatively, because you have to make scratch weight again day two. Right. Yeah. So, um yeah, I, I totally agree with you. You, pull, you brought that up as you thought that was affecting him. I think it could be definitely be affecting him. Um, but nevertheless, he finds a way to win. He comes back, scores six points in the second period, six to four, Premier Burroughs. Um, were you nervous in that one too? And really at the end of the day, Ben, like you know how it is. At this level, Like, get your hand raised. That's all that matters. Like when People want to – Think about style points or how they looked when they competed. It doesn't at this level in this tournament. That means crap. Just get your hand raised. Find a way to get it done. And that's that's the beauty of what JB has always done. Like we we got so enamored early on in his, in his career with his blast doubles, his yes. reattack, his ankle lace. That one we've talked about it before. Like how he's added dimensions to his game over the last nine years. Yep. But also. He's got to be one of the most grittiest, mentally toughest people, physically toughest Absolutely. people, mentally strongest people that we've ever seen compete. Yes. Because there's there's no quit. There's no quit in him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, to I, mean, I totally agree. And not even any quit, Matt, because I think we've seen that before. But there, you know, the, what to add on to what you said there is like, Nothing gets to him, you know. It's not like he ever throws a fit when they. Then the, what's that first damn guy's name when he's doing dirty shit the whole match, right? Or Matt, how many times did the guy not come back to the center? Yeah, that's like the Russian yeah, move. Just, I don't want to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put my camera exactly. out here. It's like this, Matt. I gotta. I, I gotta make sure you can see me here. Um, you know, it's like they sit there on their one knee like this one. This is like that's like the Russian tired pose, right? They they take a seat. And then the ref's like, come on, bro, get back here to center. Get back here to center. And, uh, you know, usually they take like an extra 10 seconds. Tell me you didn't see like everybody like sitting a, like that. 
It's like a new yoga pose that they should add to the, the repertoire and ro- yoga, the, the Russian resting pose. Right? The Russian resting pose. That's a good one. The Russian resting <laughs> Ha! The Russian resting pose. Oh, man. How many times did that happen, though? Every match. Even Sinikov did it. Sinikov did it a couple times. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. You want to hear my solution to it? I, I thought about this because I think one of the refs got so annoyed he actually did it. Just blow the whistle. Just blow the just whistle. Blow the whistle or whatever. Then or they just got, go past. No, I think you just blow the whistle. Want, Screw it. You, I, stay, you want to stay on the edge? You're over there by the edge. The guy can just bum rush you. Bum rush. Yeah. No, I agree. I think that's just good. Blow the whistle. It's so abusive. Like it's it's so foreign to the American system of wrestling. Yeah. You know where you. What's the, what's the majority of coaches? Run back the to the center. Hustle back to center. Hustle back to center. Yeah. Right. And it's like, internationally, it's more like, hey, just take your time. Chill out. Take your time, man. No worries. Oh, Russian you know when they blew the whistle? I remember, man. I'm, tr- I'm trying to think about it. You know who it was? This is a great match. Um, not a lot of people watch it because it's WrestleBacks. Uh, o- <coughs> Oda Guru Aliyah. That's when it happened. Aliyah, oh. was, Aliyah was trying to sit there, and he was losing. And he was thinking, okay, I'm going to sit here and get my breath before i got to make one last go at him. And the ref just blows the whistle. And as soon as I blow the whistle, boom, he just popped up and started attacking. <laughs> I was dying laughing. <laughs> ah, wow. Yeah, that was that was hilarious. Yeah. That was a good match. Did you see that match? It was – this is the thing. Like, Rashidov destroyed Odaguru. And I'm like – he and I didn't really think – I didn't know what it was, but – you and I both, I remember discussing this last year about Odaguro and, the, and his, his performance, and we were blown away. Yeah. He just looked a little off, and then the way that Rashidov destroyed him, I was like, he just doesn't look like he's on his game, but he he dismantled Aliyev. Well, and then, I mean, Aliyev came back a little bit at the end. I You know, Odaguro took his foot pedal. But then didn't Odaguro lose in the bronze medal match? I think he did. Uh, yeah, he lost to... He lost to um, yeah. I haven't watched the match yet, but he lost to Muzakaya. Yep. Wow. That's a lot of Russians in that bracket, too. It just goes to show you. I mean, I think we're so accustomed to seeing repeat champions at the NCAA tournament that people just generally assume if you win one, you're going to win it again and again and again. And it really puts in perspective this tournament, like how difficult a world championship is really to attain. And not only just win it once – but win it twice and repeatedly. I mean, it just puts into perspective how great Jordan Burroughs is. Yeah. And I know people are going to be disappointed, but this is his ninth, what, his ninth world championship. Yeah. He's wrestled for, what, a medal eight out of those nine times? Every time except 2016. Yeah. Eight out of those nine times. I mean, that's just yeah. absolutely phenomenal. And I, and I don't want to bring this argument up, Matt. I don't want to bring this argument up. Matt. Bring this argument up. We should save this for another time. But when you compare, it's so hard to compare a John Smith achievement, and I'm not trying to put John Smith down, a John Smith achievement and Jordan Burroughs achievement. When you look at Jordan Burroughs' achievement, Matt, he's got four matches. He's only going to wrestle one of them dudes in the old system because it's USSR, and he and they're not wrestling everywhere, right? He's only going to wrestle one yeah. of those four matches. He doesn't have to beat four of them in a row. He's got to beat one of them. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, I mean, that's... No, I mean, that's a dynamic that has changed dramatically in the last decade, right? So like, good, the yeah. depth of the tournament is so much harder. Yeah, like, 15, last 15-ish years, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So, that's, uh, okay, so we, we, we're we going on so many tangents everywhere. Um, we need to finish this, the Burroughs, and then we're going to get, get on to our other guys. So, he gets the, man, Matt, I will tell you, when he was beating Sitikov, uh, I believe it was 3-0, correct? Yep. I was feeling very, very, very confident. Um, and just like, he can, okay, he can lock this down. And then even when he gives up the takedown, there's not a huge amount of time left. Um, I should look exactly. Seconds, I believe. No, I no not the last push up, but when, when, was, when did he give up the takedown? It wasn't that far away, right? I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna At find the end it. of the match? Well, it was 3-0, and then he gives up the takedown, and then the push out. So hold on. So he gave up the takedown with... Uh, 40 seconds left, it looks like. Is that correct? Yep. I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, right around that time. I don't have it in front of me. So, I, man, I was feeling super confident. 
Um, and then it felt like deja vu. He gave up the same thing as he did last year, push out right at the buzzer. I don't think, you know, they protested, but I don't think there's a huge amount of disagreement. I think it was fairly clear, unfortunately, for Jordan. There was 1.3 seconds left, and um, he loses the match. Yeah, I mean, I was I was feeling really confident. Remember last year when he gave up, like, and I don't know what you call this technique from the feet. It's like the swim, yeah, the swim high crotch. It's getting more popular, like in a kind of outside step. It's not exactly an outside, outside step, step. It's an outside step with a penetration also. Right. It's an outside step. And if you've never seen it before, even if you see it until you feel it, it's completely different. I know we talked about this last year, but it truly, I mean, last year you could, you could tell that Burroughs was not really ready for, for that outside step high crotch, Yes, but he was defending that this year. Like he was prepared. And I saw him stop that outside step a couple of times. I'm like, and up three Oh, I'm like, he's in good shape. Like he's got a good execution plan. He's in good shape. But then, you know, similar to last year, gave up the push out. <coughs> Sitikov kind of did to Burroughs what other pe- what Burroughs does to everybody yeah, else, scoring absolutely. in short time. Yeah, I don't want to. Now again, here's we here we go on a tangent again, Matt. That outside step, inside knee penetration, whatever we want to call that, it got popular. And you know what's funny, Matt, is I I you know we bring a lot of people into tr- to coach at AWA, you know, like outside um, technicians, and a whole bunch, I'm gonna say like 60 to 80 percent this summer showed that technique, right? And in my head, really? what, what I'm saying is, yeah, it's getting popular. But then when I think about the technique, it's actually an extra step, right? A regular penetration, you just baby step, fire your inside knee, and, and penetrate, right? This one, you take an extra step, put your chest from your knee, and then drive this one in. So it's actually an extra step. And so like, to, you, you nailed it. It's not actually more efficient. Is just unique, and so now once right. Burroughs has felt it, he can shut it down, and so that's kind of what I feel with that technique. That, that technique's gonna catch fire for a minute, but it's actually a less efficient movement than what we already have, and so while it's kind of unique, it will fade away. I believe. Yeah, it's because I don't know if you've wrestled anybody that hits that, but it's it's kind of like I said. I remember. I think we've discussed it before. Casey Cunningham showed me this technique and he's like, this is not mine. He's like, this is what I picked up internationally. Yeah. And when I saw it, I'm like, it's just hard to get the timing down. It just, it just throws you off. It, 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 I don't even know how to describe it. It's just, you know, you see it's it's a weird motion because you see it coming, but then it's almost like that. I think it's, I think it's subconscious Matt that you react to the first big step don't make me get out here. I'm, right. like, I'm going to get out here and do technique again. This is this going to be our most fun podcast right. ever because I actually got up and do technique. So <laughs> let's see. So they re- you, know, you do that first step, boom, this one, and that gets, even if it's subconscious, that gets your opponent to you know to react just, just a tiny bit, right? And then they realize they don't need to sprawl because you haven't really attacked them. So boom, and then you punch. I'm not going to shoot on the carpet, right? But then you punch that inside knee in. And you're able to cover enough distance to then get underneath them. And they're here, so then that, that second motion for them to sprawl again is really tough if, if, you, uh, if you're biting on the first fake, or you know, not even a fake, whatever, for the first and step to, of the and, move. To your point, traditionally, traditionally, like where, where you're in a stance position, you're a right leg lead. But yes. to transition into that outside step, you, you almost you take a back step or a side mm-hmm. step with yeah. your lead leg. Yeah, and that's that. That in and of itself kind of throws people off because you take a back step yeah. and you typically reach the head and then punch through. Yes, and it's 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 the combination of those mo- motions that you're like, this is so outside like the traditional American system of penetration that it's like, wait, I've never I've never yeah. seen this. Like, you would think if you're a technician, it's like this is all fundamentally wrong. Because mm-hmm. you're reaching, doing a back step in an outside step, like you, yeah. you shouldn't think that it, it would work, but it does. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, okay, damn it, Sitikov got Burroughs. Burroughs is, I mean, I, I feel like Burroughs has already faced all the toughest guys. I don't want to say he's going to have an easy time for the bronze medal tomorrow, but it feels like um, when you look at those other guys that Sitikov wrestled, so, you know, who his possible path is. Um, you got the Japanese guy, Okui. 
you'll have uh, a Polish guy who beat it nothing and a Mexican guy. So, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be overly difficult for Burroughs to, to win his bronze medal tomorrow, which will be, what, number eight? Yes. Eight. Number eight, I believe, for his medal count. Um, so, this point eight, it's going to be Chimizo Sitikov in the finals. That should be a lot of fun. Chimizo kind of rolled on the top side of that bracket, which, you know, as we outlined yesterday, was um, an easier side, right? There was a few good guys, but it was an It was expected. Side. It was, it was expected, right? If Burroughs could have got that one seed, that would have been really nice. Yeah. Damn. And most people forget, like, they're, they're, they're bagging on Chimizo for not wrestling him, you know, a yeah. couple months ago. But it didn't matter. If, if Burroughs had beat him in the finals of Dogu, Chimizo still had secured yeah. by reaching the finals. He'd s- still secured the number one seed. So it'll be interesting leading up to this tournament, leading into the Olympic year, how much of a priority that that JB puts on getting that number one seed because that is I think as he makes adjustments given his age and as he gets older like yeah. I think the importance of a seed the importance of a seed even if the number the number one seed is critical yeah. so well, it'll you know, be interesting I, I to, to see do, if he speaks. I would have to do the math on it, Matt. But you know, I know I know one of the problems that they outlined with um, you know Flo outlined it is that. Under the criteria with, with the tournaments, so I, I have to look at the exact math, right? But with the tournaments, you get X amount of points for winning, okay? And then you get a bonus for every single person in the bracket. So the European bracket is always going to be much larger than the Pan Am bracket. And so Burroughs gets punished yep. for the Pan Am bracket being smaller just because it's smaller. There's not there's nothing else there, right? Um, and I don't yeah, know the number Yeah, the numbers are just not there, right? not there. Well, because last year Burroughs took... Bronze Chimizo didn't even place at the World Championships. Well, I guess he would have taken fifth place. So he would have taken fifth place. That's just the Burroughs outplaced him there. Obviously, he got the forfeit from him at that tournament, so he outplaced him there. He obviously won the Pan Am, so he gets points there. Um, so maybe, you know, I don't know if, if he would have went to one of the other ranked series tournaments, if he would have been the number one seed. I, I would have to figure out exactly what he has to do. But, yeah, the one seed would have been really, really nice for him this year because, obviously, the other thing we talked about with that one seed is with these unbalanced brackets. And the unbalanced brackets will not be the case in the Olympics because the Olympics has 16 competitors per bracket, so it'll be an even 8-8. Eight and eight. But with these unbalanced brackets, you know, in Burroughs' brackets specifically, there is 16 on um, – there's 16 on the top, and then there's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, there's 24. There's I think there's 24 or 25 on bottom, you know? So it's just a much larger pool of, of people that you could possibly have to wrestle. So, yeah. Um, yep. Okay. Let's talk. You want to talk about Gwiz? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's by and large, the rest of the day was kind of like it. It was a disappointment, right? I mean, sure, yeah. you know, when when you have multiple multiple world medal winners representing the country, you that is the expectation for them to fall short of that, regardless of the circumstance. I know with Gwiz and especially with Green, Green got a very questionable call in his match. Yeah, I'm that, gonna go off on that. When we get to that, I'm going. You want? Can we go on that right now? Let's go on that. I mean, okay. we, we can talk Here. about Gwiz. Give me your thoughts no. on Gwiz. I'm pissed about the I green really thing. You, you brought up the green thing. I'm pissed about it, Matt. It's not a takedown. It's not a freaking takedown. Period. No. He had one leg. The guy never had two legs. He never had the hips. He had one leg. And I think it's almost like I didn't really see the outrage on Twitter. Right? I woke up and obviously it had already happened. I don't see the outrage. I watched the match. I'm like, holy shit. That's not a takedown. It's just not a takedown. So it's like I actually tweeted. Uh, I'm, I don't want to mis- misquote myself here. I'm going to tell you exactly what I tweeted. I tweeted, uh, is no one mad about the takedown call against James Green? Are we all just resigned to the fact that if it is semi-close, they are just going to cheat? And that's what I feel like. I feel like, okay, it, was, it wasn't it was like the worst robbery ever, ever so we're just not going to complain about it because we're so used to them cheating. But that was not a takedown. And it still determined the outcome of the match. Oh. Right? Yes. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean... It was, I, I'm, I'm, that I'm, was painful. I'm, you know, yeah. It, it's always painful when you know, yeah, in a situation like that, when a call goes his, his way, and there's no margin of error at this level with the, with the top guys. There's really no margin of error. No. And to have that And, and that, referee, guy, that guy ended up making it fairly far. What was his name again, Matt? It was a Gadsy of all. There's a bunch of them. 
Yeah, it was Gadiev yeah, also. It's, it's like he he made the semis and then lost a fairly close match to Baev. Um, you know, yeah. that that's where Green probably could have been had he won that first match. I'm not guaranteed or anything. Yeah. Yeah, that was highly disappointing. Yeah, so I mean, uh, you got to hurt for these guys, especially, I mean, as an athlete, if someone beats you, it, it's painful, it hurts, you're mad, you're upset, but to have you have yourself beaten by the ref, <clears throat> bad calls happen, but bad calls under review are unacceptable. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's what it comes down to. They, they reviewed it and everything. I mean, I just don't know under what criteria they give that a takedown. There is no criteria where you have one leg in and it, it's a takedown. He was he didn't have the hips controlled. He didn't have the other leg. It was just nothing. He's literally on the one leg, heads in the crotch. There's no hip control. I mean, hey, Matt, if he had a hip and was kind of you know elevating and driving, I could see it, but he wasn't even there. Not at all. Yeah, I mean, there's some situation. We talked about it last night with um, – Aliyev and Rashidov, that last sequence in the match, yeah. and people were going crazy. But there was a lot of sub subjectivity involved in that review that there's subject to interpretation. This was black and white. I mean, yes. this was an easy call. Yes. That should have been like a 15, 20 second review. And you just come back. It's like, yeah, wrong call, overturn. I mean, I would like for yeah. them to cite which part of the rule book <clears throat> that says that that's a freaking takedown. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. look it up now. Again, <laughs> which which chapter? Again, I which think... chapter starts sites takedowns? <laughs> Seriously, okay. Um, so let's go. That that was highly disappointing. Green does not get a wrestle back, as we discussed. Um, that guy, uh, Gadzia, loses to up in the semis, so it means obviously there's no wrestlebacks, which I hate the double wrestlebacks, but yeah, um, yeah. So let's go, Gwiz. I was, um, you know, for Gwiz, I was very disappointed that he kept shooting. And this is something in my early 20s, mid 20s, I probably would have said. But Matt, I, I, I think I, I can't remember which other match I said this with Gwiz about. I felt like there was no way that guy could have scored on him besides Gwiz going underneath him and the guy circling behind him. I, yep. I felt like that that was it. That was the only way. The guy wasn't, the guy wasn't controlling the ties. The guy wasn't pushing him around. The guy wasn't threatening him with a leg attack. And Nick just keeps, you know, I don't know what's in his head where he has to feel like he keeps shooting and shooting and shooting. It was like prior to that go behind, he'd gotten underneath the guy, I don't know, three, four, five times. And being able to hold on and not give up the takedown, but man, you're 260 pounds. This position sucks if you're 140 pounds. Now you got yeah. 260 pounds on you over and over and over again. Man, you're gonna you're gonna give one up. Yeah. And to give it up a, a couple times. Yeah, I, I yeah. you you would think you would think, and I you know, coming into this tournament, we we both said we thought Gwiz had kind of clearly established him be, behind behind himself bet between Taha and Petra Shavili, yeah. that he was the number three guy. But by a margin, like we didn't think that he was going to beat those guys, but we definitely thought he was the number three guy. But to show, you know, it's one thing if he was in his first world championship. He, this is his fourth, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And, yeah, you would think that you there would be – a better level of discipline and maturity in his his execution plan, and it's it's one thing if you make some mistakes a couple of times in the first period, but then you have a, a quick period of time in the in, in in the break to make adjustments, or your coaches can make you aware of something or point something out that you're not that you get caught up in the moment in the first period that okay I got to make this adjustment in the second period. He didn't make the adjustments that you need to make. And yeah. that's part of the game. Yes. Yeah. I, I was disappointed in that. I thought, had, had he not kept shooting under. I mean, even you know, if you don't want to get put on the clock, which I don't think he was going to because he was significantly more aggressive, just keep stepping to those high singles. Just yeah. keep stepping to them yeah. over and over and over again, you know? I mean, yeah. I just I feel like that would uh, feel like that would have got the job done. Um yeah, I don't know. I guess I was just disappointed, Nick. Obviously, that guy got beat the next round. Um, the Iranian guy, who he, he's good, he's just not great. Um, 
And so that means and that that's the thing. I think that's the thing that's frustrating, right, Ben? Yeah, he's good, not great. Yeah, at this level, it's like don't get don't don't lose to a good wrestler. At least uh, yeah. you know, as upset as you are, like have somebody great beat you. Have someone take it from you. Don't, yeah. in a way, give it to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that wasn't Gwiz's intentions or, or whatever, but. It is disappointing. I mean, you're a multiple-time world medalist. Like, the, the level of expectations rises. And the standards and the level of criticism that you, you open yourself up, up for when you've achieved certain things, like, you've got to – yeah, it's, I'm, I'm disappointed with him because I, I really think he's top three in the world. Yeah. Matt, I'm looking for um, the, the takedown points and – they don't even have a definition of a takedown in here anywhere. I'm trying to find it. I mean, the only thing I can say is the only the only one thing that really said is brought the offensive wrestler to the ground, which that's that's way too vague. That sh- surely that cannot be a uh, uh, that cannot be the definition of a takedown, they, right? They don't have a video up on that because I think they had a really good fan tutorial on the scoring system. I know that's kind of the biggest thing in wrestling is like. How do you interpret the sport? How do you make sense of the sport? I think UWW, they, they play a video before each session okay. that I'm breaks down all that. the scoring rules. Yeah. And they did a really good job in short segments identifying what a takedown is, what a push out is, what a, a feet to back is, what a step out is. And it's, I kind of thought they would have that on the UWW section because I oh, think it was okay, really man, good. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I found it. Here we go. Two points. The wrestler overcomes and then controls his opponents by passing behind, uh, by passing behind. So, uh, which also that's a very vague statement. To the wrestler who correct who applies a correct and complete throw that brings his opponent into a prone position with three points of contact. Um, to the wrestler who executes a hold that plays the opponent's back and angle. Nope, that's the back points. Uh, rolls onto his shoulders. That's also back points. To the opponent who blocks his opponent from st- from from doing a throw. It's also back points. Okay, that one's Greco. To the wrestler who applies, uh, whose opponent flees out of bounds and lands in danger. Greco, Greco. Uh, to the opponent who flees in danger, to the attacking wrestler whose opponent commits a foul in the danger position. So, I mean, really the only one in there that applies the takedown is to the wrestler who overcomes and then controls his opponent by passing behind. Um, by passing behind. It's, I feel like there should be more on a sentence, but that's all there is. So, that's a really vague, vague, vague explanation of what a takedown is, and I don't know. I mean, I guess oh, you could some guy maybe that's what some, the freaking officials are looking at, Ben. It's vague, and they don't even know what a f and takedown is. Can we, right? can we can we get a definition of a takedown on the UWW <laughs> rulebook? Can we define what a takedown is like in real words? What does that mean, Matt? By passing behind? I don't know. Because that's the only one. Because I mean, the second one talks about I mean, really. It's if, if they just added one more sense, you have to pass behind the arms and the legs, basically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, wow. Okay. So tomorrow we have four more men's freestyle weights. We have Kyle Snyder. We have Patrick Downey. We have Kyle Dake, and we have Tyler Graff. Um, and we also have the completion that who's up? Cox is wrestling in the finals, Bro is wrestling in the bronze match, and I, I guess those are the only two. Um, yep. So, yeah, should, should be a good day tomorrow. I'm excited. Do um, you have anything else you want to have input on here? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's got to, we have to come through, we have to deliver. I mean, if you look at the Russians, I hate to give them credit, but they're putting on like, one of the best performances that I've seen from them in a while. They, have, they, have, they haven't had an incomplete performance at any weight class. Yes. Even in, I, I think even it is it the guy at Snyder's weight first world championships he's wrestled for a bronze. So even a guy. But not Snyder because Snyder hasn't wrestled yet. No, I mean I mean Cox. Is it Cox's weight class with the Russian? This is his first world championship uh, and he's in for the bronze. I'll look. But even um, that when, I think, I think it is. I could be. I could be wrong, but even yeah, that guy. That guy lost to Karimi in the semis. Yeah, but he's wrestling for a bronze. So even at their most untested weight, they're wrestling for a medal. 
Yeah, it's impressive. So you got to give those guys credit. I mean, they're they're showing up, they're competing, and uh, they're performing, and that's, yeah. that's what it's all about. We have to perform. Yeah. I guess, and Matt, we didn't even discuss this. They got two tech falls in the finals. You gave yeah. you gave and Rashid off both both get tech falls in the finals. That is, yeah, that, those performances were mind blowing to me. Yeah. So for us, you know, I think as a country, I think the conversation has been we are clearly there's there's a two tiered race. It's clearly, you know, the, the way that we've been talking is like it's the U.S. and Russia and then the rest of the world. Well, we're in fifth place right now. Yeah. So clearly. That's not the case. That's not the case. Yeah, correct. Okay, cool, Matt. Good talking to you. Um, let's plan on uh, talking exact same time tomorrow after we watch all the matches. Good, all right, peace. Yeah.